weekend. Yes, sir. Hi Mr. Darrell, <laughs> Ms. Nisaini, how are the both of you doing? I'm good. How are you? I, I can't. Go. I see you rocking the new. Show the new nerd hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to represent. I mean, yeah. Where's my hoodie? We'll get you one. I promise. I'll, I'll make sure. It, it's back ordered right now. <laughs> it's, it's back ordered. It, it'll be there soon. <laughs> but thank you both for taking the time to come on board. We got a chance to do the make code session earlier with the Wakanda Forever to show the, the, the people in the audience. But now I really just wanted to have a conversation with the both of you to talk about your experiences as well as some of the things that you ex are, are looking forward to in the technology space. So Desi, let, let's just kick it off with that first okay. question. Hi, Mr. X Ash, my name's Desi. So I wanna ask you and Mr. Booker, what are your roles and responsibility at Microsoft? Yes. Thanks for having us, Desi and Ian. I am the Chicago Community Engagement Lead for Microsoft Philanthropies. Now, let me let me ask you this, Miss Nisaini, because I think we, we lost Mr. Booker for a second. We're gonna get that handled, but you actually were a ninth grade teacher. Really? Is that yes, correct? I taught ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade. Wow. That's so cool. okay, all right. <laughs> Riddle me this. So a teacher, right? See, Chicago Public Schools, my <laughs> CPS. How did you go from being an educator to then transitioning into the technology space? How did that work? Yes. Would you like me to pause for, so that we can know what Darrell does, and then I can go you're right, right about back. that? Yeah, yeah. Because we got Mr. <laughs> Darrell back. All right, l l you right. I, I love the producer in you, Mr. Booker, Mr. Durrell. Can you share with us your roles and responsibilities at Microsoft? Yeah, I, I'll keep it brief. So um, with Nisi I &E, I'm on the philanthropy side of Microsoft and just really focus on uh, leveling the playing field and technology with our black and brown communities and just making sure, uh, one, you know, the organizations that's providing the most valuable services, um, especially those nonprofits like Dream Hustle Co., that you all have everything that y'all need for the highest impact on your mission. And your mission is my mission, which is, you know, education, skilling, workforce development, and just preparing the next generation to be successful in their careers. Wow, so, amazing. They, they, you they, both have wonderful roles, mm, but wow, that's just amazing. Like, okay, so again, how did you get into <laughs> technology? Let, let's start with, let, let's go back to Miss Nisaini and then we'll come back to you, Mr. Durrell. How did, how did you get into, into the technology space in the first place? Yeah, so I will always be forever grateful for my teaching experience. I entered the world of education as a career changer. I was previously in the corporate sector, joined Teach for America, and was able to then start an 11-year, just a rewarding career in education matriculated from being a classroom teacher to a school-based administrator to then having a portfolio of schools for Chicago Public Schools. And I just want to pause and shout out Curie High School on Chicago's South Side. We're reporting to you live from Midway. This wouldn't be part, like possible without the school partners. And my sort of back to the original question, after 11 years in education, I matriculated over to nonprofit where I got to be a part of non-traditional candidates, black and brown, starting their careers in tech. And that organization, I see stars, is a grantee of Microsoft, and that's how I got my role. And as a first generation Latina from Humboldt Park here in Chicago, second out of three generations in my family to go to post um, educational, post-secondary attainment to really figure out what would life be like to combat generational poverty. I'm super pumped about causes that Dream Hustle Code and New Nerd are working on. Back to you, Darrell. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. So wait, wait. Let, let's give a little bit of background for you, Mr. Darrell. So you, you're now in philanthropy, but you you were first a software developer. Am I right about yeah. that? I'm correct. I mean, I, I I still consider myself that once it's, once a software developer, you always a developer. And uh, honestly, at some point, I'm gonna get back to it. I just I just updated my computer the other day to get back coding, so I'm I'm gonna start back getting building some apps. But yeah, that that's why I got my feet wet in tech. So what started you? I mean, why did you choose software development though? What what inspired you to get there? 
Yeah, I mean, the short answer is uh, my dad bought a computer home one day and I was just messing with it. I mean, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, something like that. And just, you know, at that time, just doing commands and just, you know, I was just awed by how I was typing something and doing something and I could see the computer reacting to what I was doing. So um, that just sparked a passion in me to be like, you know what, I can build things. I can, you know, I can make apps. I can automate things. I can make people's life easier just by typing on the keyboard. So that was the start of it. And then just kind of took it over from there. So well, Black Panther 2 just came out, right? I still haven't seen it. Yeah, okay? no spoilers. It, no it, spoilers it, at all. I know. I I've been so busy either. preparing for this event. I didn't have a chance to go to the <laughs> movies to see it. But like, so, and recently, Black Panther and Microsoft did a collaboration to release some amazing products, right? So can you speak And to shout us? out to Darrell. He, he was the architect behind that incredible free wow. resource that everyone should take advantage of. Mm, the Mako one? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. yes. So yeah, again, in chat, I'm telling you, great people. So there's a reason we mm -hmm. do everything on this show. But can you talk about the experience or how Microsoft is able to partner with other brands to create these unique experiences for the public? And also, what was it like working with the Black Panther team on the latest movie? Yeah, I mean, you know, Microsoft has is very unique as a tech company because it's literally we have something for you know, every corporation to use, every individual person, um, you know, even on the consumer side, if you think about gaming and, and, and everything associated with it. So a lot of, you know, a lot of opportunities come up. There's nine out of ten times there's a fit of where we can lean in somehow. Um, so, you know, with this one, you know, working with the Marvel team, they had reached out, um, and you know, even, I know you haven't seen the second one, but even knowing the first one, there's a, you know, there's a heavy stem throughout the movie, um, both movies. Um, you know, there is, you know, you have incredible females who are represented within those movies. So they really wanted us to see if we can put something together that could, um, you know, really spark more of you know our black and brown to be in STEM, um, especially our females to be in STEM, um, and not just partner with them to you know promote the movie. You know I think that's easy for any brand to do to just to promote the movie, but they really wanted to do something more uh, meaningful and impactful. So uh, I mean literally the hair brand idea. I said you know what? What if we you know do a coding curriculum that's you know Black Panther Wakanda theme. Um, leveraging make code. Um, let's put on a, a lecture at Howard University with the professors there. Um, and we took Marvel team. And I mean, they loved it. I mean, everybody at Marvel and Disney is just really awesome to work with. Um, and, you know, looking forward to doing more with them. Thank you for that. Um, so I, my next question is for the both of you. What are some of the challenges that you both have had had to overcome being underestimated in the tech space and how are you able to do so go ahead and okay, you go I'll first yeah, Nisa, Nisa, thank Nisa. you yeah so i think for myself like as a latina to really have examples in front of me around what it could look like to work at a place like microsoft is not something that i had the opportunity experience or really being able to leverage having social capital at an early age, you know, it's hard to aspire to be something that you actually can't see. And the, the more that I've got steeped into programs that are ed focused, and now in this day and age, like that would be STEM focused, programs that helped me out throughout my academic journey, one that immediately comes to mind is I was an upward bound participant that's a national organization. They kept me off the streets Monday through Friday. That's how I actually made it to college. And then in my career early on, having mentors that would stick with me to serve as my social capital, to be my endorsements. That's actually how I got my role was through one of my mentors. And I can't express enough for black and brown talent that want to get into tech overall or gaming, like identifying mentors early on will help make your runway a bit shorter than theirs. Mm. What about you, Mr. Durrell? What have been some of the challenges you faced being in the tech space? 
Um, I mean, it was tough for me because at the age of 18, I was working full time in tech, you know, the same job that, you know, <laughs> everybody said I was college at 18. I was I was lucky to get it. So, um, you know, nobody looked like me around me, whether it's, you know, because of my skin color, or just age. I was I was young, you know, 18 year old around a bunch of, you know, 40, 50 or even older people. So for me, um, it was always trying to prove myself that, you know, uh, I was as good as them or that I could do it or just being perfect. Um, and, you know, kind of listening to what, what, what Eric said, and, it, you know, there was a time when things just clicked in my head and I said, you know what, I don't, I don't have to be like anybody else. You know, I don't have to put on the blue shirt and khaki pants um, to be taken serious. You know, I can be Darrell. I can be 100% me um, because I, I had gained a lot of confidence just in me and my skills. And for me, it was just, Hey, either you're going to rock with me or, or not. And I'll go somewhere else to work. So, um, that's kind of the mentality I've just kind of taken since then. But, you know, it, it, it was a rough journey, especially for me, cause I really didn't have any mentors. I really didn't have, uh, anybody to kind of look up to, uh, in this space. I just kind of had to figure it out. Okay. So before we wrap up this segment, I think it's important to, to leave us with some gems and things that we can take forward. So if you could, for those of us watching, of course, what can we do now to prepare ourselves and having a career in technology, especially preparing for the jobs that are coming up that may not even be out yet? What can we do now to get ready for that? Let's start with Ms. Nisaini first. Yeah, I would say definitely having solid um, digital fluency. I think we can confuse being digital natives because we work smartphones, but we can naturally be digital inhabitants. And what I mean by that is being able to leverage the technology that is still very central to the workforce. We still use laptop devices. Yes, we do a lot on our mobile devices, but that has not replaced 100% the way we could work. And you don't want to be left behind on the digital fluency bus if, if you're not a digital native and make it like your business to stay relevant as the emerging technologies are coming to fruition. Okay, last but not least, Mr. Durrell, what can we do now to get ready for the future? Uh, one, find your passion and keep the passion. Just, you know, if you're going to get in tech, find that area in tech that you're really, really excited about. Um, kind of back to Eric, don't follow anybody else's footsteps in tech or don't, you know, hey, I want to do this because I heard it makes a lot of money. Do the thing that you're passionate about, the thing that's going to keep you up at night, the thing that's going to keep you off the streets or doing other things because you're so passionate about it. And then also, you know, use the things that are at your disposal. Technology is the one field that you can sit at home on computer and the internet and teach yourself anything. Lawyers can do that. Doctors can do that. Cooks can do that. I can go down the list of people that have to either go somewhere and get a certain type of formal training or they need certain tools and materials to do your job. All you need is your computer and for, uh, for real, for real, you can do it from tablets and phones. So really take advantage of it. Get as much experience as you want to because those that are hiring, including people like me, I look at the experience and at the end of the day, if you can do it, that's going to get you those jobs. So get as much experience as you possibly can right now. Wow. Okay. Those are some amazing. I think those are some yeah, good gems was, right now. That was really good. So with Ian, that being Ian, can I put in a quick plug, Ian? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So, and to make things like this happen on like the, the incredible activations like Darrell and his team did with Black Panther and, and Make Code for Wakanda Forever, the gaming tool. Another way to all the teachers and administrators and parents that are on here, big part of your, your student aspiring to wanna to work in tech would be having access to computer science education. It is computer science education week, which is why this is happening this week in particular. And I just wanna pause and highlight Microsoft Teals we have a national program that we offer to our school partners that's free of cost from a curricular stance and working with educators to bolster and enhance CS education. So I don't know, Ian, if we can be incredible and put the link to Microsoft Teals in here, but I had to put in I had to put the plug in right now. 
Absolutely. I can't blame you for plugging. Somebody mods figured out Microsoft Teals, put it in chat <laughs> for me. <laughs> they smart enough to do it. So with that being said, both of you, thank and number one, thank you so much for joining us, but thank you so much for be for supporting not only Dream Hustle Code, but supporting the mission of uplifting the next generation. We really do appreciate you. I do from the bottom of my heart. Dream Hustle Code does, the entire team does. Thank you for everything and thank you for joining us during this event. Thanks for having me. Thank All you. Right. Let's throw it to the intermission now. <laughs>